are they pure evil, these two, Ratcliffe and, and Jenkinson, pure evil? Well, they ended up committing, you know, pure evil acts. Truly. And they ended up, you know, demonstrating the most monstrous behaviour. But I think, you know, as you and your previous speaker have said, um, that, that that is our response. It's a natural response yes. and it's an accurate one. It's how we deal with the emotion. When something this awful happens to an innocent child, we all tend to be horrified. As we think about it then, we, we tend to be terrified that it could ever happen to one of our children. Yes. And, and the next stage must be not just holding the particular perpetrators to account, but actually understanding why they did what they Absolutely. did. And what can we as a society and, and, and those within society charged to protect young people do to prevent this happening again? And that means looking back at the difficult issues. What was what happened to them? What trauma in their life? You know, uh, what family dysfunction? What parenting styles? You know, what you're, you're, you're asking Jim, You're asking the questions that have been going through my mind since this case first went to trial. And all I've got, which is the reporting of the trial, are, are Jenkinson you know, stressing from a loving home. Uh, and so, so the idea, I mean, I, I thought there must be some kind of ch childhood trauma. There must be something going on. But if there is, I am unaware of it. I'm, I'm a full time single parent. I'm 50. I'm a good dad. I'm a Buddhist. I'm a pillar of the community. I do an awful lot of charity work. Nice one. However, at one point uh, in my late teens, I was in prison for grievous body, bodily harm. I, I, I did do something quite bad. Now, the circumstances in the environment is what made me what I was then. It isn't who I am now. And I think that what you have to be aware of is the driver behind certain people. Mm -hmm. If you saw me then and saw me now, it's very different. But the point I did want to make, when I was in prison, and I can absolutely categorically guarantee this, and it's part of the world that the world doesn't want to acknowledge these days, there are people out there that are pure, mm -hmm. undiluted, distilled evil. I'd met a guy who had killed his wife tragically because his business wasn't doing well and he mentally lost his capacity to think straight. Yeah. However, I also met a guy who fancied a barmaid and when she cut her hair, it wasn't pretty anymore. And he did the same thing. And generally, I found when they were in there, they were sociopaths. They were the people who could walk among us, but they have the inbuilt capacity to do terrible things without remorse. And these people do exist. I would say with the two that committed the crime against sure. this, this poor girl, there's normally a driver and a supplicant to these things, like a herd mentality. Were they not together? You know, look at Huntley and his wife. But the reality is there isn't always a why. There are people, unfortunately, out there that do have this inbuilt capacity and always will have. There's nothing you can do with these people. Can I, can I ask and... Please, this is not meant in any way to, to cause offence, but I, 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 you've, you've spoken plainly and I'll speak plainly about it. Do you, is it possible that when you committed your crime and went to prison, mm -hmm. that people might have said that... You, I don't know what the details of your crime, that's why I don't, don't want to cause any offence, I don't necessarily I, want to hear I, them. But do you think, you, do you think I, people... I, I, was, I was homeless at 14. Right. Uh, you can get any no-fixed address benefits until you're 16. Yeah. So for two years, I had to break into houses for food. That led me to living and working with people that were addicts, which led me to work into a crime syndicate. Um, and what I did was a means to claw my way out of the hole. So, it so, wasn't so, for enjoyment so, or need. So my, my, so my motivation was different. Well, so, so my question is, is it possible that some people back then might have judged you as evil? Yes, they very well they very well could have done, but had they sat with me and saw um, that my needs, uh, education, I mean, I, I could hardly read or write at that age, very different to now with a degree, but they would sit with me and go, okay, this, uh, this person isn't and shouldn't be defined by what they did. I can tell you I worked for a guy who is terrifying by anybody's standards. I think that um, evil can be more prevalent within society than if it, it all depends how we define it. Um, than we than we yes. Yeah. So I think we're all born amoral. Um, not not really can, knowing or caring right or wrong. We don't know right from wrong. We have to learn. Yes, yes. absolutely. And then um, around the age of two, we um, develop. Most people develop empathy. Obviously, that's encouraged within um, one's environment um, and then we have to really develop the rules so we're not necessarily 
moral just with empathy. I mean, I've worked with psychopaths and um, sometimes they've had enormous amount of empathy. So, I mean, that was years ago. I mean, I don't like to label people, but, um, um, you know, so so essentially... um, it's the rules after then, after that. So that just shows you how important society is. I, 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 think. I, follow, I follow it up to a point. I, I, my question immediately is, could you tell, when, when do you think you could tell that a child is not developing empathy? When, when would, that, would that become clear? Would, par- would parents notice? Would teachers notice? Because I just, all I hear about the two killers is, is that they, you know, they were quite good children, you know, in the grand scheme of things. You know, studious in one case and uh, a loving home in the other. And I, I, at some point, I'm just fascinated, if they're evil, did nobody notice? It's the rules, though. So you can, you can have empathy and potentially, because without compassion and the rules of society, I missed out yeah. compassion, that's an important one, um, because you could watch a film, for instance, and um, there could be an eyebrow gaze towards... Adolf Hitler, and you could develop empathy, believe it or not, for someone as uh, with that morally diabol- by diabolical behaviour. Um, I mean, essentially, you have to have it, it's the three components. I would say empathy plus compassion plus knowing what the rules are. As if mummy's not particularly very well, and you go and give her your doll, how is that going to help her? You've got to know, no. And most parents spend most of their time at the age of two, mothers saying no. But what about no. what about when the child? I, I'm fascinated by what you're saying, Susan. What about when the child's I don't know eight, nine, ten, eleven? Um, uh, the, 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 the the conventional um, uh, claims about psychopaths is that they're out there sort of pulling, you know, torturing animals and such like. What what if that that wasn't to happen? Do you think children lacking empathy and compassion and struggling with the rules would be noticed? That would be identified. What do you think? Well, obviously not in this case. It's uh, that's what that's really what I'm trying to get to is is is. Well, c- hold on a minute. If the society, yeah. I mean, you've got to remember we've had collective evils in society. Nazi Germany being yes. one of them. So, so if most people are not adhering to what we would call as fair-minded, you know, rules and, and what have you, then will it be? Will it? If the dominant philosophy is selfishness, pig-headedness, thoughtlessness, then maybe there's a lot more... I don't know. It's an, it's an interesting one. Would you say... Would you say the pair are evil? Is, 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 that, is that a useful term? No, I, I, I think like you, I think the behaviour is evil, Clearly, but yeah. we need to get at the reason why. And sometimes that, that is just... Purely, that's the way their brains are wired. And it's very difficult to get around that. In some ways, it's a little bit like paedophilia, where the people don't really understand what they're doing is wrong. So, do you think we'll ever understand why two 15-year-olds, unless we forget it was the most brutal uh, of murders, 28 stabbings. Yes. Do you think we'll ever understand? I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever understood why Thompson and Venables killed James Bolger. So so I'm asking it from a position of uncertainty. Do you think we will understand the motivations between Jenkinson and... I, I think eventually, as we discover more and more about the way the brain functions and how it motivates people. But at this point, I don't think we we do understand. But that the somehow or other, it's been formed in these two young people's minds that it was OK to do this. Scarlett was apparently really shocked when she was arrested for the murder. It was almost like... What have I done wrong? Some kind of disassociative disorder, yes. which which has been acknowledged in in the courts. Yes, it's. I, it, it is awful. It is truly. It, it is it truly really awful. Is. And it and it's not just trans people. Other minorities have been demonised, and again, then they get attacked. Can, can it's I, almost like I like. We society or parts of society have said it's okay to 
to be hateful 